uh, say, what role do probiotics play in ridding oneself of candida? That's what we talked about. Uh, can they ex uh, cause or accelerate the candida die-off effect? I haven't seen them cause um, a die-off effect, uh, effect from candida. Many people, as I mentioned, there was this thing called a cytokine storm, the release of these cytokines, a pro-inflammatory reaction based on how the immune system responds. People sometimes misinterpret that response, which will cause aches, body aches, pains, as the same response, which is called a die-off reaction. A die-off reaction is usually caused, um, thought of as when you take something to kill candida or get rid of candida, that it causes um, is people, if there's too much, too, uh, more than the body can handle, it creates all these aches and pains. I think many times it's what they're seeing is an immune system response and not a die-off reaction per se. But that's uh, a lot of people have, unfortunately, based on some of the, the early uh, um, books on candy that were put out, this was commonly the Herxheimer reaction, also called the die-off reaction. People have got that fixated in their minds, and I think it's really more of an immune system response that people are experiencing. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. That may be a positive sign that your immune system is coming back, that it's playing a role in eliminating candida. Um, so it's not that you need to get rid of that. Um, and then do probiotics survive? So that's the question we answered in the stomach. Um, what we can do now is I'd like to just take a little, we'll take a look at our uh, candida library. I know we talked about putting it up the last couple of times and we still haven't gotten around to that. We have things to work out with. Uh, with the site and uh, the links on the site, making sure they're all functional before we send people to it and then have people calling us. Um, here you see the site and you're seeing uh, the pictures at the top, very colorful, uh, representative of candida in its yeast form, budding, uh, creating um, the pseudo hyphal form, which then leads to the hyphal form. Um, we'll have uh, information about the site, the library, uh, the gallery of photos. Um, We'll have my recommendations will be on the site. Can we go into the site or? Yeah, okay, so let's go into the site and we'll take a look at another page through the library. <coughs> and you'll see we'll have boxes here. So we'll have what is candida. We'll put a uh, definition. We'll, we'll have the history of candida, uh, types of candida. So we'll, we'll give you all the different species, over 200 species. Um, candida in the body, the fourth one there. Can we go into that one? And that'll take us further in, and then we'll, we'll look at the effects of antibiotics and um, some things that I can't read from this distance. So I'm, I'm reading a, a, a web page a few feet off. So, um, But it, we'll, we'll look at candida, um, how it affects uh, the effect through antibiotics, uh, the effect of the immune system. Um, so we're developing all these categories so we can more um, look at the, the studies. Can we go to any of those? or yeah, Let's go to the first one. I think that's the antibiotics. Um, and then maybe open up one of those. So this is uh, astronauts and candida. So we're going to give uh, an explanation, uh, a little bit about it, and then we'll have studies. Um, we'll support this is something I wrote about it, um, astronauts, why we're looking there, what's happening, what's taking place, why NASA is interested in candida. Um, and again, going back to the first question, this doesn't exist, and here, here's NASA looking into candida, um, uh, as well as all these pharmaceutical companies and universities, 24,000 studies of something that supposedly doesn't exist. Um, what we go into and explains more, and then we'll have, uh, you'll, you'll have links in some of the words that'll link to definitions. We're trying to make this as comprehensive as possible, so if there's something you don't understand, we'll have a glossary you can refer to. And then we also have the studies, we cite the studies um, we can go back and maybe to one of the studies. Oops. Yeah, so then we, we post the studies, we'll post the link at the bottom. Um, uh, in the abstracts, I'll highlight what I consider to be the important pieces of information in there so you can pretty much focus on that. Uh, sometimes it gets pretty technical. Um, when uh, what Lisa's showing you when she highlights one of the words in blue, You'll get a drop-down box, a definition of what that is. So, you know, it's trying to make it as user-friendly, give you a lot of information, stuff you can easily access. And then I'll be creating uh, pages that will guide you through um, this whole process, sort of like a, a written version of what we're doing today, um, which will, should be more effective. And then it'll list all the studies, so you can go and grab the studies. It'll be on the site. Um, it'll have the link if you want to try and go grab the, the full article. Many times. When you go to those links, you'll have to go. You'll have to pay to get the full article. 
unless you uh, belong to a university uh, library and can do that free. Um, we'll have our most popular articles, our, our highest rated articles. We'll have uh, the user rate the articles, what they find useful, so we can make the library more effective and, and user friendly and more relative to what people are really searching for and the answers that they're looking for. Um, here's the, the page for the definition of Candida. Um, so, um, you know, as you can see, we're putting, there's a lot of time that goes into this. I have to review all these studies, I have to go through. Um, and again, there's definitions and we'll have links. And it's, it's really a comprehensive database that doesn't exist right now. There are several sites that say they have a database and they don't. The most I've seen was one site that had four or six studies and that was it. Um, this is this is not a, um, there are a, there's a site out there that's backed by the pharmaceutical company. It denies the existence of candidiasis, systemic candida. Um, it's very biased. Um, the research is easily um, disputed um, and, and shown to be erroneous. Here's our gallery. So was, this will take you into some of the pictures that we've seen today. Uh, we'll have videos from the broadcast. We'll have pictures of what uh, it looks like uh, in the body through oral thrush or um, how it affects the skin, et cetera. Uh, the videos, this is all there. We'll be adding, constantly adding more. We're looking to add more. Um, we'll keep it fresh, alive, updated. Um, and it's, it's, it's a, a site we're really happy about. And, and it's a site we know that everybody who's looking at Candida, whether they be a practitioner or a, a patient, consumer, they can look. They'll, an amazing resource right here. So you don't necessarily have to go to PubMed and start digging through 24,000 plus studies. Um, we're trying to make it as easily um, accessible and something people can relate to and utilize. So well, that's our Candida library. I know I've talked about it, so we want to at least give you a, a, a quick view of it so that you know that it actually exists <laughs> instead of us talking about it all the time. Um, <clears throat> Please elaborate on the effect it Candida has on the brain, acetaldehyde. Um, acetaldehyde is one of the byproducts of Candida. So if you were to go to Great Plains Laboratory and do an organic uh, acid test, this is one of the substances so they'll be demonstrating through their testing that you would see. It's, it's um, basically a waste, a cellular waste product from Candida in many cells. Um, uh, he wants to know the effect. Uh, it's, uh, there's, a, um, there's an effect that you'll see in the literature that um, is called auto-intoxication. So, um, and the way this theoretically works out, someone who has a mass of candida infection is producing so much cellular waste product from the, the candida that it produces acetaldehyde, which is like an alcohol. And that alcohol is these people are basically chronically drunk or kind of in that tipsy stage because the body cannot deal with the amount of waste product that's being produced by these cells. Um, my opinion on that is that there would have to be a, really quite a massive amount to produce that. Um, the effect of alcohol in the brain, um, acetaldehyde can destroy cells, interfere with uh, feedback loops in the brain, interfere with normal cellular function. Um, uh, I mean, the list goes on. And then that, and you get into the body, how that interferes with uh, normal function of liver cells, spleen cells, bone marrow cells, production of white blood cells, red blood cells, how it affects stem cells. Stem cells are, are the things which create new cells, so our, our turnover of cells in the body. Um, uh, in Great Plains Laboratories, I mentioned, does testing for this. You can have this done. I haven't spent a lot of time so far in addressing this simply because other people address the issue of acetaldehyde and, and quite extensively in a lot of the literature. And I think it's actually not, not the thing to be most concerned about with candida, the fact that it can suppress the immune system, manipulate the immune system, um, and the whole effect of how it destroys tissue. I find this to be something that's much more relevant to candida's, uh, fungal candida's effect in the body than merely the waste products. Um, it's only when the body becomes so toxic with its own waste that it can't handle that um, because of all the dysfunction which can be created by candida that this extra burden of acetaldehyde really becomes pro problematic. And that's where you get these people who are really going through a lot of auto intoxication. Um, now the rest of the question is what does it take to clear this up? <coughs> um, McCombs plan. Uh, that's, that's what we've used. I, I created the plan about 18 years ago, about 18 and a half years ago. It takes uh, getting rid of the, the candida, the fungal candida, reverting it back to its fungal form. We don't try to kill it. We just want to revert it back to the, the yeast form. I think fungal, I said. We want to revert the fungal form to the yeast form. 
and then let the immune system get rid of what's excess and, and restore the balance. We want the body to bring the balance back. We're not going to pretend that we know more than what the body can do, but we want to give it a fatty acid, which weakens the cell wall membrane, allow the immune system to restore the normal balance, allow the bacterial colonies to be replenished through fluoropyne, and allow that whole process to restore the normal balance.